Good morning, everyone. It's June 11th, 2024. I just want to catch you up on a little bit of an update today. And uh, it was a meeting that I attended uh, last week. It was the uh, last meeting for the Alliance uh, to End Homeless in Ottawa here till September. We're taking the break for, um, for the summer. And uh, they were talking about green energy and going green. And uh, a lot of people were there, and all those who are trying to even build a housing in that, even social housing, are looking at green energy too to try and save money in the long term as well. So it was a very interesting meeting. Uh, they were explaining a lot of things, how um, the funding is there for it, and sometimes people um, cannot get the funding if it's, um, well, sometimes they put, like I'd stated in one uh, video earlier that they give you a window to get certain funding and if you're not prepared for it uh, ahead of schedule then you don't get it so they are so they sort of look at one project but they also are looking at a project past that so that they can try and have that ready so they don't lose lose a window at the same time so it was really very interesting on how they want to do this and um, how they want to really turn around and save money and at the same time they want to be um, saving the planet so there's and this was something that uh, they were started looking at prior to the pandemic and so we had some people come in and talk about the green energy and it was um, very interesting uh, they of course I don't understand all the technical stuff to, because it can get quite complicated but uh, they were taught but when they talk about solar panels um, some of them are also talking about well we've got older buildings that we have to look after too and we can't just let them run down so we also have to divert funding to repair and and keep the upkeep of the older buildings uh, and for example when they when we're talking about green energy some of the um, places that they have are so old they want to replace the windows in them and when they want to replace the windows for example uh, this is a good example they want to put thermal windows in energy efficient windows in as well so that costs money so they're looking at all different things this is the first time I've seen people actually coming together more and more from all different aspects of um, the homeless and dealing with uh, building housing and stuff so it's amazing what's actually out there but uh, it's suddenly people realize well we really need to get together and talk about it together not just here over here or over there um, separately we need to really come together and take a good look at this so we're putting everything out on the table and this is a good thing but again I'm seeing uh, with the funding and problems it's long term it's not short term so it's going to be very interesting again to see how things fare um, and again when winter starts hitting us there in the fall but um, I just want to assure you I'm seeing really good 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 things coming but it's just slow coming, unfortunately. That's what's so frustrating right now. We need to house people like now or, even, or by yesterday even. So it's very complicated on how they have to do the funding and stuff. And, of course, you've got time limits from the government too sometimes on it. Um, there's many different things in many different parts of red tape and that they're explaining on how to get this funding as well. So... It's just a matter of time, and it's going. To, unfortunately, we're going to have to be patient. And but we're but I'm seeing progress. Definitely, it's going in the right direction. It's just going to take time. So I wanted to brief you in on that. And then um, uh, about two couple of weeks ago, there they were talking about um, immigrants coming in because this is another thing with the housing that they didn't have it. But there was this organization that uh, were able to get a house. They started off with 10, 10 immigrant women in the house. They're giving them all the support that they need for what they need to get jobs, language, you name it. All the supports that they need. And they were able to get enough funding that they got another house for another 10 women at the same time. And that's just, uh, then they're uh, going to be in overload. They can't afford another place for any more women. But these 20 women, they want to make sure that they're solid. They've got a roof over their head. They're going to school. They're giving them all the tools that they need so that when they leave the shelter, they will be able to be productive, get their own places, 
go out, pay their bills, everything so like we do normally. So that is a really, really good thing that I've seen happening. So they're very excited about their project. It's only a start. It's only a drop in the bucket. But it's a step in the right direction. And if we could get more people even getting houses and doing what these people are doing and re refit retrofitting houses for even 10 people at a time, uh, this would be really, really great, you know, where they have communal living, where they have to share the kitchen and everything. But that might be the way to go, too, is what they're, they're expressing and saying. So that's one thing that was really good to see on the news as well. And then um, I'm hearing about um, the schools again. And they're talking about, like I've been talking about, for supportive housing being putting in the life skills for, um, you know, for people so that they can actually go out and work and be productive. And a lot of these people do not have any of the basic life skills, period. And that's, uh, as I've said, like even just doing dishes, they can't seem to look after themselves. So again, now the schools are looking at this as being something that they, maybe they need to start teaching again in schools. And this is something that's been kind of rolling around in a lot of people's heads over the last uh, little few years, anyhow, that the young people are losing the life skills that we were given to having two parents teaching us life skills. So this is another thing that's uh, being talked about right now. So that's a good, good thing. At least people are talking about it. They aren't just pushing it in the closet anymore. It's being talked out in the open and being talked about. And then the other thing that just came out um, just a couple of days ago, there was young people are so stressed out right now, they're, they're going on burnout. And, and uh, the statistics were quite shocking on it. I didn't get all the statistics, but most of the young people are feeling stressed out today, paying rent. They can't pay rent. Or do they have to pay the rent? Or do they have to pay for their food again? And that's, of course, inflation and everything that's going along with it. So they're more stressed out and they're burning out. And it's not like the classic ones where we're seeing where the hospital staff and the nurses and doctors are burnt out. It's the young people that are being burnt out as well. And that's not a good sign. And this is uh, this is the millennials, this is uh, uh, Gen X, whatever they call it. And I mean, we didn't have this problem as baby boomers, but we're, I'm seeing more and more of my friends trying to, as baby boomers, trying to step up. When we're thinking, um, where did our retirement go? Because we thought we'd be sitting back and relaxing. And we find we are stepping out and we're busier than we ever were when we were actually working and in the workforce. So this is what I'm seeing today. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of a brief update. And everyone, take care. Be safe. Have a nice day. And be aware of your surroundings. And we'll talk again soon. Bye-bye.